For some flows, rather than work with individual messages, it's necessary to perform operations across a series of messages that are related in some way. For example, a file node can be used to send a message containing the entire contents of a file, or it can be configured to send one message for each line in the file. These are known as message sequences, and there are a number of nodes in the palette that are there to help you work with them. To understand a bit more about what makes a message sequence, let's look at an example. Here is a flow that injects a message containing CSV data. Each row represents an item purchased from a shop. It has a date, quantity and item. In this example, we want to add the cost of each of those orders into the data. We begin by passing the message to the CSV node. This node will parse the data and output a message containing an array of objects, one for each row of data. We pass this to a split node, which turns that one message into a message sequence, with one message per element in that array. Passing the output of this node to a debug node, you can see the messages arrive, with the data for the row as a parsed JavaScript object. We next pass it to a function node that contains the list of prices for each item and calculates the cost of a particular order, adding it as the cost property onto the message payload. Remember, this node will be triggered once for each row of data in the original CSV. Finally, we pass it to a join node. This node can be used to turn a sequence of messages back into a single message, in this instance, creating an array of the individual message payloads. This is passed the CSV node, which formats it back into a CSV text format. So here you can see each row of the CSV now has the cost property added. You will have noted we didn't do anything to configure the split or join nodes. This is because their default behavior is to do the right thing when given certain types of payload. For the split node, if it's given an array, as in this example, it will create a message sequence with one message per array element. If it's given a string, it sends one message per line of text. If it's an object, it sends one message per key value property of that object. The join node, by default, tries to reverse whatever action created a message sequence it receives. This automatic join mode only works if the messages in the sequence contain the right metadata that enable that to work. The metadata is what defines a message sequence. Each message contains a property called message.parts. This has a unique identifier for the sequence, a message's individual position in that sequence, and a count of how many messages are in the whole sequence. There may be other bits of metadata provided by particular nodes. For example, the split node is able to tell the join node how to restore the original message by adding in some other properties. Looking back at this example, we can actually remove the split node entirely and reconfigure the CSV node to send one message per row. This works because the CSV node adds the message.parts metadata to the messages it sends. Other nodes that can be used to work with sequences are the switch, sort and batch nodes. The switch node can be used to filter the messages in a sequence, for example based on the message's position in the sequence. It's important to tick the recreate message sequences option if the node is used to remove messages from a sequence, as that ensures the message metadata is updated to reflect any changes. The sort node can be used to reorder the messages in a sequence based on various criteria. And finally, the batch node can be used to create message sequences from a stream of messages based on different modes of operation. So in summary, message sequences are a useful technique for running some sort of processing across every item in a collection, whether that's objects in an array or lines in a piece of text, for doing the sorts of tasks where in normal programming, you would look at creating a loop. The join node can also be used outside of message sequences to help you combine different streams of data into individual messages. We'll explore that in another video.